All right. My name is Jason Levine. Very nice to see you and have you join me. So uh, what we're going to talk about today is cutting, uh, cutting video to the beat of music. And this is something which is done all the time. But more importantly, it can be automated in Premiere Pro. It's a really simple process and uh, something that, you know, again, is very common and really is sort of a great way to get started if you're, if you're sort of cutting, <laughs> I almost said montage, montage, you're cutting montages or any kind of just sort of B-roll backing that, you know, you sort of want, you know, you, maybe you'll have some voiceover. I, I did this recently for this little documentary I was cutting where I just had kind of these scenes going against this music. And it's, it's just nice when you transition on the beat whether you use dissolves or any other sort of, you know, light leak technique to transition the video itself, that's entirely up to you. But there is something very aesthetically pleasing when the video kind of follows, you know, the downbeat of music, whether it's super fast or slow or whatever. So let's go ahead and uh, switch my screen here. Uh, and what I have here are a whole series of shots, for those of you who weren't with me yesterday, uh, that I did in San Francisco a couple months ago. I even have some Adobe stock content to kind of round out the footage um, that I shot. I might set some in and out points, just kind of the regions of interest really that I want. And you'll see why I'm doing that in just a moment. I don't know how long this is necessarily going to be, but we'll kind of do a couple seconds on each of these. This is actually one of the shots um, I think that we used um, yesterday. Some nice fog, slow moving fog here. And again, we're looking at this at quarter res if anyone's wondering why it looks a little pixelated. Okay, so we've got our quarter res fractional playback while it's happening here on my uh, on my laptop. So I'm going to set a couple in and outs on some of these things. Again, here's another uh, here's another time lapse classic classic Golden Gate shot that anyone who's come to San Francisco and shoots the Golden Gate, you can stand in this exact position and get this same piece of content right here, which is kind of nice. A couple stylistic shots here, which are kind of neat. Um, or at least I thought they were neat. This one might not be moving quite as much. Very slow moving. That's all right, it's kind of cool. Super shallow depth of field. These particular ones here, I think these are mostly iPhone. All right, so we're gonna start with just audio in our timeline here, all right? And I'll uh, let you quickly listen to this. This is uh, a ballad. Actually, this particular piece is something that I composed and recorded for our collection of Loopology files. Loopology, over 5,000 royalty-free pieces of content in more than 35 different styles, played on dozens and dozens of different instruments. And this is um, some of the pre-created timed music beds that I built for you. Uh, this is one that's just in the general category, and it's kind of a, a, a ballad style. So take a quick listen to this. It's kind of nice and slow and dreamy. And you can kind of see where the shots would. Okay. So you get the idea. So how do we start the process? Well, here's the thing. Um, it is in fact an automated process. In fact, the button is called Automate to Sequence. That's what I'll show you in just a moment. It's been there forever. Um, however, you still manually have to put in markers on the beat. Now, I of course can't, <laughs> if you can't feel the beat, you know, that's kind of on you. So it takes practice, right? It's, and also of course, there is that time delay of actually hitting the key, in this case, shortcut key M, you can also just click on this add marker button right here as it's playing back to add those markers and you can kind of fine tune them in advance. Um, it's also with audio files in particular. Now it gets harder and harder with uh, more and more modern mixes because if you've ever looked at the audio waveforms. Oftentimes when you look at them even Premiere, unless you're really zoomed in, it kind of just looks like a, like a solid rectangle. You can't even see peaks and attacks anymore. But this file, because it's fairly sparse, you can actually see peaks, right? You can actually see where there's like the beat of the kick drum or the snare drum. So that's gonna give you again another sort of visual indication of where or how close you are to the beat in case you know your timing is a little off, right? And admittedly, um, based on you know uh, um, uh, the buffer settings of your sound device, you know if you're using an internal sound card or an external sound card, there is some delay introduced here. So you may have to slip and slide those markers just a tad. But in any case, let's start playing back and I'm going to lay down some markers. And uh, typically I'll lay down one right at the beginning 
uh, before I do anything, and you'll see why in just a moment. Let's go ahead and play this back. You can see it almost even stops a little bit there. I have that much content. Okay, so now when you look down below, again, you can see here in our timeline that we have all of these green markers. And as I was saying before, if I just kind of shrink this up a little bit, and if I use my, um, again, I'm just gesturing here on the mouse to expand the vertical height of my track. This is again, one of those sort of little hidden features that people don't realize. You can also, of course, you know, you can use these little portion bars thingies on the right side. I don't even know what we call these anymore. I don't know. You can just gesture or you can actually just physically grab the track divider and resize it, but it's so nice and easy with a wheel or a gesture mouse. But as I was saying, you know, if we zoom in here and we look at sort of where the markers are, right? You can physically see that I'm I'm right there. Boom. That's a nice little kick drum right there. Ba. Right? Kick drum marker. All right. And, you know, it's, it's really, um, because we're dealing in frames per second as opposed to samples per second, look at that, it's kind of like right in the middle of the attack transient. So, you know, sometimes you can actually move it back a frame if you feel like it's not, you know, it's not quite right. To be honest, I think this is going to be good enough for what we need to do. It's certainly on the beat in terms of real time. It's just a question of do you want the video to appear a little sooner. And sometimes that one frame difference actually can make it look a little better, in which case you could just click and drag and slip that marker to where your playhead is and it just snaps right there as you just saw. Okay? So we'll just leave that one like that. Okay. So now that we've got our markers in here, let's now select our content that we want to automate to that sequence at those cut points inside the project panel, all right? So I'm going to, first of all, take off this preview area, and very quickly, I'm just going to make this full screen so I can select all of my clips, and of course, you know, we can scale this up as well, and you've got your hover scrub capabilities here. This also makes it easy to see that I've already set some in and out points, right? So I can select this one, select this one, this is a very long clip, so maybe I'll come in here and I'll do a little in and out on this as well. A couple seconds. So let's do this, 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 uh, this one here, and maybe we'll go to this one here, and this one, and this one. Okay. I select all the clips that I want, all right? Whether or not I have more markers than I have clips, that's fine. It just won't place a clip at that marker, okay? So now the key thing is we're going to go into this button, this function here, which actually has a little tool tip called Automate to Sequence. So let's go ahead and choose that. And remember, we've selected all of our clips. We've already dropped in all of our markers. And now we can choose, first and foremost, the sort order. So do we want how it's sorted or how we selected it? I want the selection order, how I actually clicked and placed and organized these things. Don't forget that when you have this view, uh, the icon view in Premiere's project panel, you can actually physically pick up and reposition clips in a sequential order, and that can be the sorting order, all right? So you can actually move this around a la sort of storyboard-like to put things in order before you even come into this dialog. And I can show you that again after we do this, just so you can see. Placement. Sequentially, or at unnumbered markers, we're going to place it at unnumbered markers. We're going to do an overwrite edit for the method here. For still clips, we can use in-out ranges, frames per still, so you can, again, use this in combination with still imagery that you have. There's also some defaults for how long, you know, a typical still image comes into a sequence. Um, if needed, you can see here, transitions can be applied, and you can ignore audio, ignore video. We're not going to do that for now. Selection order, at unnumbered markers, overwrite edit, in and out range, Let's click OK. Let's go back out so we're no longer in full screen, and there we go. Just like that, it's done. And if we take a look down here, you can see, by the way, here's why I, I added that marker at the very beginning at zero of the timeline, because, you know, by the time you hit play, 
that first marker wouldn't be at zero. So I just always drop one in before I even start. You can also just drop one in and drag it after the fact. It doesn't matter. But that way you get video at the first frame. And that first frame, of course, will probably do something like a, you know, a little quick fade up. So just to, again, just real quickly, I'm gonna do that because I would. this is something I would do anyway. Kind of a nice long fade. And then maybe we wanna do uh, you know, transitions across these, cross dissolves or whatever. For this kind of slow, slow music, I might like something like that. Maybe in the faster section there, uh, we'll let it kind of actual just straight cuts. I know, cross dissolves, not ideal. Most people hate them. I'm just trying to show you. But you can see that all of our cuts now happen at the markers, exactly where we placed them. Really simple, really easy. So now when I play this back, oh, and did I have, look at that, I have a piece of footage there that is not, um, that is not the right frame size. Let me just scrub through and make sure everything else is. I think it is. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And here, since uh, someone was asking before, ah, here we go. So it's under media preferences, default media scaling. So right now I have none. If you want it to automatically scale to the frame size of your sequence, use that. If you want to set it to the frame size, these are two different things. Again, we have videos that discuss the differences there. Here's where you enable that option. Okay, wasted time gone. Let's go and play this back and check out <laughs> my automate to sequence. Here we go. Oh, what? What just happened here? Oh, because I cut into my music? Oh, because there was audio on some of those. Oh, duh. That was dumb. Okay. My bad, yo. Okay, no problem. Let me just go ahead and redrag the music back down in there. That was my that was my user error. That was pretty dumb. God really kind of stole my thunder right there. Okay. Here we go. and the, the cross dissolve just kind of works there. Again, we're in one eighth playback ways here. We ran out of footage there, okay? All right, so very simply, very easily, all right, we cut everything right on the beat. Does it stretch the clip rate, Joshua? No, so it does not. So, so this is a fundamental thing about this and that's why it's asking for the type of edit that you're performing um, insert or overwrite, but no, it doesn't actually do any stretching of the content. Now, if you had uh, a piece of video where you had that was too short, um, you'll have black space, right? It'll, it'll just it'll play as much as it is, and then it'll go to black. So the technique there, if that were the case, now for for these clips, they were all fairly long. Uh, we didn't have that problem, but what you could then do, let me just let me just pretend here that this piece is shorter, okay? So you'd have this kind of gap right here. Um, if you right click on the effects badge down here, or control click, you could do a time remap, of course, and you know, whoops, not that, and actually slow slow the clip down, right? to kind of fit the duration. So that's something that you could do in the event that your media is too short, but it doesn't actually do a stretch. It's a great question. Okay, now that's kind of just doing it with very slow music, but again, you can have it super fast paced. I don't need to really show this again, but the concept would be, and if we take out our uh, audio target on track one here, okay, same thing. I could set my marker before I begin. <laughs> Okay, so here I did much more, much more rapid fire uh, marking. If I take the same, same clips up here, let's do the same thing again. All right, this might be too many clips now. Selection order, add a numbered markers, overwrite. We can ignore the audio even though I've, I've moved it here. But let's go ahead and click OK. All right, back out. And there we go. And once again, everything is beautifully in place. All right. And because we ignored the audio, it didn't insert any of the audio that on the clips that had it. We're good to go here. So let's go ahead and play this back now. No transitions. Okay. 
And this is another. This is from my ambient rock corporate collection inside of Loopology's Music Beds. And that's it, friends. That's Automate to Sequence. It's that easy. Now, like I said, you can also manually go in and move those markers about. Here's another example, right? Again, this music was mastered, but it wasn't mastered, you know, to, to kill the listener. <laughs> so there's actual peaks in here so that you can really see, you know, again, it, it takes a while to kind of get the timing, just the timing. It's, it's not unlike doing anything with an external controller. Um, there is obviously a little bit of a little bit of latency, not much. We're talking milliseconds here. Um, but again, depending upon your sound card, depending upon what you've got going on, if you're working in 4K, I recommend doing this kind of cutting, you know, at a lower fractional playback just for better real-time performance. Um, all of those factors come into play. So if you find that like your markers are every time they're like three to six frames off, you might need to readjust buffer settings or perhaps try dropping the fractional playback resolution in the program monitor. Also, if you have it available to you, it never hurts to um, go into your project settings and again, choose one of the various levels of GPU acceleration, which again, just kind of takes some of the headache of playing certain things, file formats, and if you've got grading or anything on footage or whatever, uh, if you've got like master clip effects, kind of takes the edge off there, frees up the CPU to give you just more real time when dropping in those markers. And again, if you're on the Mac, you know, you'll have OpenCL, Metal, Software, and possibly CUDA if you've got any supported NVIDIA CUDA cards. Um, and then, of course, you can also, uh, you know, use the CUDA on Windows as well. Have a great weekend, everybody. I will see you again. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.